So it's been a while since an update. I haven't had a massive amount of time to be able to spend on it, but I've got quite a bit done. So the first few things are just sort of making it a bit more integrated. So the light sensor that's up on the top of the dashboard is now hooked up. So <clears throat> when it detects that it's bright, it brightens the screen. And when it's dim, when it's night time, it darkens the screen. It's quite hard to show on camera, I've tried, but the, the brightness on the screen, the camera doesn't really pick out. But it's also hooked up to the lights. So as your standard screen does, when you turn your lights on, um, that dims. So I should be able to pick that up because that's quite a big drop. You can sort of see, see them both dimming along with each other. And the, the brightness dial still works as well, so you can change the brightness using the dial down by your knee. So that's in there. Quite a nice change of the steering wheel buttons are now now hooked up. I've sort of reshuffled them about a bit. So this one is now playing pause. The voice, the old voice one is now Google Voice. You can see it comes up on Android Auto instead. Uh, volume buttons are done. Which is quite nice because obviously they used to be down here so it's a bit of a pain and skip also so you can skip, skip your music using the steering wheel buttons which is which is pretty good so the next thing which is quite a big one is the visuals have been updated uh, before getting into them actually these buttons have also been added so the power one now turns the pie off and turns it back on the home button, I'll show you what that does. So we exit out of Android Auto. It takes us to Open Auto Pro, which is this software that the Android Auto runs in. It used to be a bit of a pain having to go into your menu, go into your apps, then opening up the Jag app. So, what the home button does, when you're back into Open Auto, we do it again so we can see how smooth it works. So we exit out, press the home button, and it takes you straight to the, the Jag app as it was. So this has had a bit of a redesign visually. Not all the buttons along the bottom are working yet. I've kind of taken a bit of inspiration from the in control screens. I'm trying to get it without that reflection, it's a bit hard. But we've got the climate, we've got music, which is still in progress. We've got minimize, we've got exit. And then this one is sort of like the car stats. So there's not a massive amount on there at the moment, but there is your trip settings. So if we go to trip computer, see we're on trip auto here. So if we go into this menu, see down on the left, they match up. The range is off. I got the range wrong, obviously. Um, but that should be quite easy to pick up. If we go into trip A, you can see it updates and they're all matching in there as well. Trip B, pretty much the same as trip A for me. Uh, in auto, if I had the trip from a previous trip, see it all updates on here as well and they're all matching. So this one, we've got sort of three data cards here that we can use. So this is gonna be your trip things. I need to make them visually a bit more better looking, but this will be your trip stuff. The middle one's going to be live engine data, which I've already got. I've sort of done a tutorial for people who want to make their own one of these. Um, and I, I've pulled revs and speed off for them. Kind of holding on till I've got the cooling temperature to add into that, because we all, we're all missing a temperature gauge in these. And the one on the right is going to be quite an interesting one. So using my scanner, I've got uh, the iCarsoft one. I've managed to copy the messages that that sends. So when it requests the DPF full level, for instance, I can now do that from the Pi. So if you think this one can be a load of information like that, so it could be DPF full level, DPF status, there's a ton of stuff on those on those scanners. And I should be able to pick up on some of that. So that, that would be quite nice to have, because obviously everyone, everyone has DPF issues on these. So that would be quite handy and then you can just navigate back here, back to this page. So this works as it did before, just, just been a bit redesigned really. 
just to try and make it a bit more visually pleasing. Need to scare the text a bit, but, but yeah, that's the update for the minute. But I've been looking into replacing the screen as a whole, and obviously it's still quite a way off because I still need quite a bit more on this screen, but, but it's definitely doable. I just need to be able to get all of my read-only data from here, and then the things we normally write from the screen, so like when you press one of these buttons, you're writing a message. Uh, I've just then got to pick them up. So I'll obviously do all the read-only ones first, which will sit on here. And then when we've got to that point, we can start start taking over some of those.